Tonight, our five regular members, myself, David Rathbun, Lynn Conway, Fred Dykeman, Ben Philbrick, and Gardner Young. Also present is our two, all two alternates, Peter Shemowitz and Charles Sheehan. Uh, do I hear a motion on the minutes of the previous meeting? Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Any discussion? <laughs> you look good. Good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, Keith? And yeah, moving to the <clears throat> administrative review items, item 4D is uh, 41 is 2264ZON, Joseph uh, Dekovic, Alex Slater, zoning permit application for landscaping and dock access in the non infringement area, parcel located on Palmer Neck Road, Pawkatuck, assessor's map 56, lock 14A, zone RC120. Um, so just as an overview, uh, this is in the RC120 zoning district residential coastal, um, which includes a hundred foot non infringement area from tidal wetlands. Um, the zoning regulations define the non infringement area as the area designated by the commission or these regulations adjoining a stream, floodway, wetland, tidal area that may not be disturbed, filled, or improved, but can be used with permission from the commission for. Either public trails, greenways, boat access, or water quality restoration activities. Um, this is in the definitions section of the zoning rest. Um, what the applicant's looking to do is um, keep the trees in this area intact, but remove undergrowth and invasive species there. Um, no clearing or disturbance can be done in the actual tidal wetlands without. Um, Without DEP approval, um, might be looking for a future dock plan closer to the northern end of the site, which DEP approval will, will be quite will be required for that. Um, it's a vacant lot, so any new house construction um, will have to get a zoning permit from our department and remain out of the non infringement area. Um, and the locate location of the flood zone will make it likely that the the House will be closer to the road. Um, the applicant did have a natural resource evaluation submitted by a soil and wetland scientist um, for the lot adjacent to this, which is owned by the same people and is very similar. Um, the report says that the tidal wetlands are well defined by their vegetation, so it's not really a mystery where they begin and end. Um, the understory of the wooded area is largely invasive and nuisance species that are of lower ecological value. Um, and mapping surveys historical area for the conclusion of that report would also apply to the subject lot. And um, Mr. Slater is also uh, all here and maybe he can speak to you a little about what his plans are for the property. Um, because this, there's not like, you know, a specific plan to look at of, you know, just what would be removed or, or restored. Uh, Dr. Slater, Dr. Slater? Yeah, uh, can you hear me? We can hear you. All right. Um, so... Uh, the area of the non-infringement zone, um, I um, spoke with Ian Cole, uh, uh, the soil scientist, and, and the plan would be to um, uh, get rid of most, get rid of all of the invasive uh, species of plants. And he has um, described um, in his report some of the um, types of um, replacements that could be put in that area. Um, all of which are of higher ecological value to the land. Um, so um, this this would be uh, something that would um, enhance the um, ability of the non-infringement zone to protect 
the waterfront. I do not um, plan to create a golf course kind of um, uh, landscape down to the wetlands. Um, in fact, I prefer to have that area of non-infringement remain uh, um, somewhat um, covered by. Um, no, nothing more than nothing beyond 197. I'm sorry. Yes, Gardner, we hear you. Oh, sorry. Let me mute it. Mute it. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so um, there are um, there seems to be a, a, a large selection of um, uh, of indigenous um, um, plants that uh, can be selected that would allow me to um, uh, have that area. Um, Oh, look at all the people who are on. Be ecologically sound and yet um, aesthetically um, something that would be um, more pleasing to me. Anyone have any questions at this time? Yes, Mr. Chair. This is, this is Ben Philbrick. Um, I was. I didn't see in the scientist report what invasive species are there. And maybe I missed it. Of what species you were planning on uh, planting? Uh, well, I'm I'm not the expert in that area, but um, from what he has um, described in his uh, um, report, um, there are um, um, other uh, species of plants that would be. Um, mainly like uh, certain grasses, um, certain shrubs. Um, uh, I have uh, looked at, I've reviewed the, um, the um, uh, uh, publication from the University of Connecticut, uh, uh, excuse me, University of Connecticut um, uh, regarding uh, something called riparian sites. And they give a, a, a reference to large list of um, native um, species of, of uh, shrubs, grasses, um, and trees that are um, uh, very helpful to, to the um, um, development of, uh, um, of an ecology that's uh, uh, friendly to the environment and to uh, animal and, and other plant species. Um, so there's there's a lot there's a whole host of things that can be used in that area, rather than the invasive species that are um, climbing up the trees and it, and it's so dense down there you can't you you know there's just no way to get around any of it uh, because these vines and these um, the, you know the mayhem down there uh, with with the invasive species I believe uh, probably cut off some of the um, indigenous plants that could thrive down there. I understand. So you're not planning on just mowing it all down, planting grass, no, and having fertilizer. Absolutely. No, I will. I will not use any fertilizer in that area. Good. Good to know. Thank you. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions at this time? And I did send the commission uh, earlier comments we received from uh, from Rick Newton, who had concerns about uh, the application. Um, Depends on this. I'm confused. Who's that, Lynn? Any other members of the commission have any questions this time? That wasn't me, David. I, I have no idea who that was. Okay. Do I hear a motion on this application? So, um, you know, it looks like there's a few options. Um, you know, one is just to allow as submitted, you know, another would be to allow with some sort of limits. Um, or perhaps, you know, the condition of some sort of submission of a vegetation management plan um, involving maintenance of existing trees and replacement of invasive ground cover with suitable vegetation that can either be reviewed by uh, by staff, well, I guess by staff. Mm 
just to have a little bit more, yeah. I don't know, uh, certainty to what's being removed and uh, right. put back. Would someone like to make that a motion? So, so we, we could make it a stipulation um, yeah. to approve with a stipulation that that staff um, have the opportunity to review the uh, plantings that are, that are proposed to put, be put in place. Yeah, and some mention of, you know, maintenance of the existing trees there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I will make that motion. Do I hear a second? I second that. I like that idea. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nice to have it. Okay. Yeah, next is uh, item six, old business. Item six A is PZ two hundred two zero SPA and CAM Latimer Point Condominium Condominium Association, Ed Lally, site plan and coastal area management review applications for first and second floor additions, deck additions, demo and replacement of single family residence, installation of two new septic systems, property located at ten Center Drive, eight North Shore Way, one eleven Latimer Point Road, Stonington, Connecticut. Assessors maps, blocks, and lots 154, 432, 154, 213, 154, 43. And that's zone RM20. Um, is there anyone here representing this application? Well, usually for something like this, we do have, uh, you know, one of the consultants here to go over it. Maybe no we can, uh, maybe we can uh, punt this until the end of the meeting in case someone's having a hard time getting on. Okay, we'll, we'll move it on. Um, the other old business items, this is 6B, the bond release from Mystic Health Center. And 6C, um, the Fair Acres Park on Whitehall. Um, recommend tabling those um, until the next meeting. And that just leaves the public hearing for 32 Broadway. All right, Ben, you're on. Get unmuted here. Yeah, we hear you. Okay, legal notice of the public hearing, Town of Stonington, Planning and Zoning Commission, November 4th, 2020, virtual meeting. First went to the general statutes of the state of Connecticut, revision of 1958, all amendments there too, and first went to the zoning regulations for the Town of Stonington, Connecticut. The Planning and Zoning Commission hereby gives notice that it will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, November 4th, 2020 at 7 p.m. by virtual meeting on the following application. PZ 2018 SUP and CAM G Development LLC S. Sherenzia Special Use Permit and Coastal Area Management Review Applications for the Redevelopment Change of Use from Automotive Service Gas Station to Small Hotel, previously to Restaurant. Proposal includes demolition of existing structure, parking, stormwater management, utilities, and associated landscaping. Property located at 32 Broadway, Ave, Mystic, Assessor's Map 174, Block 19, Lot 1, Zone LS5. Um, the way we will conduct a public hearing is, the first thing is all regular members of the commission are seated for this. Myself, David Rathman, Ben Philbrook, Lynn Conway, Fred Dugman, and Gardner Young. Uh, we'll hear from the applicant. And all those in favor of the application first. And then we'll hear from anyone opposed to the application. And then we'll have any, uh, anyone just general comments on the application. And then we'll have the applicant will have the right to rebuttal and then we'll have a follow up by staff. Um, who is presenting this? Is it Sergio? 
Uh, yes, uh, I'm ready to present if you can hear me okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, for the record, Sergio Cherenzia with Cherenzia and Associates, offices located at 99 Mechanic Street in Pawcatuck, Connecticut. Um, I am the uh, civil engineer uh, and uh, the, the plans and application before you this evening was prepared by my office under my responsible charge. And, uh, for the record, I am a licensed uh, registered professional engineer in the state of Connecticut and both the president and principal of Transient Associates. Um, I'm here this evening on behalf of uh, G Development LLC. Um, my client is is not on the the, uh, the WebEx call, but um, is available uh, to uh, th through me to, to speak. I, I do have him. He, he wasn't able to uh, to log on, but um, if there are specific questions for them, I can uh, speak with him directly and, and, and get answers for you. I'm accompanied this evening um, by virtual uh, meeting with um, the landscape architect, Elena Pascarella of Landscape Elements, um, as well as uh, Mark Camo, uh, the, uh, the architect of record. Um, so uh, I'll give a, a brief overview of the site existing a little bit of history on the um, where we've been with uh, the design and permit on the on the site and uh, get into a little bit more of the detail of the of the site considerations uh, with the proposed uh, development. Um, the existing property is located at 32 Broadway Avenue. Um, I'm going to share my screen now uh, if that's okay. I can just so that everyone's got a visual that can see it. Um, just give me one minute. Okay, um, so the, the visual I have up now is just of 32 Broadway um, and the surrounding properties. This is the town town GIS. Uh, as you can see, that's a relatively small, small, small site, excuse me, about 0.18 acres in size, um, completely developed uh, with pavement. And as uh, mentioned, it was a previous gas uh, service station constructed in 1934, according to the town assessor's property card. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the property is, um, is bordered by Washington Street uh, to the north uh, at the intersection of Broadway Avenue to the uh, east. Uh, to the south is the uh, Mystic Fire Department, which many of you are, I'm sure are familiar, familiar with. And then to the west um, is a developed property, um, heavily developed property uh, with uh, uh, some, some commercial commercial buildings. Um, under the uh, existing condition, I'll zoom in a little bit here. It's the, uh, most of you know, it's the, the service station. Um, if you look at a street view, you can see it's a you know relatively vacant lot. If you drive by now, there's a fence around it, uh, the building. Uh, Broadway Auto Building was uh, used for some uh, fire uh, training um, exercises, and see the roof has has some holes in it. Um, the tank that was on site uh, and the the pump stations have all been removed, and uh, you can see this this gravel area. That's where the the the, uh, the underground tanks were were exhumed um, uh, from from the site. <clears throat> The, uh, <clears throat> the zoning for the property, it's a, an LS5 zone. It's not located in any groundwater protection areas. Um, and uh, the, uh, the Washington and Broadway Avenue consists of varying uses such as the bar restaurant, um, M bar uh, to, the, to the north across the street, um, the fire station, as I mentioned, and then various as various offices and retail uh, surrounding it. Um, the proposed uh, the proposal for this site will meet all uh, bulk zoning requirements. Will not need any variances. And we're in front of you this evening for for a special special use permit um, for a proposed hotel. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, that's a photo of what it used to look like uh, with all the cars on the on the property um 
to give you a little bit of background of where we've we've been and where, where how we've gotten to this proposal, um, you may I, I notice in the um, in the summary uh, that uh, we we uh, filed for a, a rescheduling of our application uh, because when we originally proposed this building, um, we proposed it as a restaurant. Um, that was with the understanding that we could uh, utilize offsite parking. Uh, we, we came across a nuance in the uh, zoning regulations that although this this lot did allowed an LS5 offsite parking, um, it only allowed what is known as a send a, a receiver of offsite parking, and you could not send parking away into other um, off to other uh, properties, um, not without some kind of relief. I'm I'm assuming so. Uh, we had a meeting with the with the police chief and the police commission, um, and after some significant uh, commentary between the police commission, as well as from planning and zoning department, uh, my client decided that uh, a restaurant uh, would likely be too much, um, uh, you know, for safety concerns and neighborhood concerns, and reduce the the um, the use. Uh, which would be much less uh, given the, the amount of parking available on the site, um, the safety issues to a five bedroom hotel uh, with a one resident uh, management, uh, re residence, uh, management residence. So a total of, of six unit hotel. Um, as I mentioned, the, the entire uh, lot is, is paved. Um, right now uh, we're uh, currently um, in an area where, you know, the entire site has been developed. So the, the soils have all been disturbed. Um, we are located within primarily, primarily a zone, uh, FEMA zone AE. Uh, so that's an A flood zone, um, with a flood elevation of 11 feet. Um, what I can do is I can throw on just for your, let's see here. I believe we have contours. You can see from the GIS, we're at about elevation six, which is, uh, we, we've done a survey that's that's about accurate. Um, and the flood elevation is at elevation 11. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the FEMA flood regulations, you typically wanna be one foot above the base flood elevation, which would put you uh, at a minimum floor elevation of elevation 12. Our proposed building um, is gonna be uh, proposed ab above that. Uh, we're gonna be lifting this structure on piers uh, or piles uh, and um, gonna be able to drive under the structure. Um, so with that, I'm gonna go to our, our site plan. Um, this is the land survey, similar to what you saw with the, um, uh, on the aerial photo, there's a sidewalk along Broadway Avenue. Uh, the photos which you saw, there was there's this gravel area where the tanks were exhumed and the existing structure in the northwesterly portion of the lot, very close, non-conforming to the northerly property line along Washington Street. Uh, and you can see the existing structure um, does, does, does not meet FEMA flood uh, elevation. Uh, the first floor is at elevation seven, um, and the, uh, the garage floor is at uh, six and a half, uh, which is well below the, uh, the flood elevation, much like many of the other buildings along Broadway. Um, that are in this flood zone um, and is, uh, you know, situated in, in this area. Um, I'm going to take me a minute here just to scroll to the proposed site plan and have it come up. And I'll try to zoom in here a little bit so you can see it better. Um, I will also note that we are in a coastal area management uh, coastal area management zone. So, in conjunction with our special use permit this evening, we will uh, also be pursuing a, a coastal area management permit. Um, and I will make note that this uh, the the proposed uh, property is is about 850 feet away. There are no um, any coastal buffers or setbacks that are are imposed on this and. The drainage uh, from this site will go into the 
town drainage system uh, located in, well, it actually, I believe, state state highway drainage system, town, town or, and or state. Um, so uh, it, it will be tributary, but within their, their drainage system for the town. <clears throat> Um, under the proposed condition, the building is, as I mentioned, is elevated. It's a two-story structure, approximately 1,700 square feet in footprint. Um, so there will be parking at grade underneath the building. You can see that um, there are two spaces, an ADA space and a regular space underneath the building um, with the stairwell and the elevator to the rear of the building on the westerly side. Um, and it is accessed by a walkway off of Broadway Avenue. Um, from the, from the sidewalk there, uh, which gives you uh, welcoming access into the building um, and then to the stairs and the elevator to the rear. Um, the, uh, the access, uh, as far as vehicular access goes, we are going to change these um, relatively uh, large curb cuts in and out uh, on Broadway. We're going to eliminate one of them, uh, make it more of a pedestrian entrance as, as shown. Um, on the site plan, and we're going to more or less push people to an entrance off of off of Washington Street. Um, we feel this traffic flow will be a lot safer. Um, it'll allow for cars to get off of Broadway, which is a much more heavily traffic uh, traveled road uh, to get off that that main road to get onto Washington Street and then make the turn into the site um, underneath the proposed building and then into the parking area on the uh, opposite side. <clears throat> there, there wouldn't be any access in that way. We'd have, have signage that says, you know, one way, do not enter um, to prohibit people from coming in on Broadway. All the traffic would flow in one way from Washington and flow out onto Broadway, which gives you a better, you're, you're better able to navigate the traffic if you're coming onto Broadway as trying to, uh, as opposed to trying to come in from Broadway and causing any queuing or our stoppage um, in, 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 the, in Broadway Avenue. Um, the entire site, as I mentioned, is impervious under the existing condition. Uh, we feel that we're making a significant improvement as we will be uh, introducing some infiltration areas for stormwater management. Um, I mean, technically, we don't need to um, uh, really do, do much for stormwater management. But uh, we figured this is a good way to improve the site, imp uh, introduce some green space. And in doing so, um, Elena will get into a little bit more of how we landscape these spaces to be both aesthetic and, and attractively landscaped to uh, improve the streetscape, but also will double as uh, stormwater management and infiltration. Um, The, uh, the parking on the site, uh, we have more than adequate parking. Um, as I mentioned, when we were proposing a restaurant, that was gonna be um, difficult to meet the parking requirements and we couldn't meet it without going off site. We can get all the parking completely on site uh, with this proposal. Um, we actually probably have almost twice as much parking as we need uh, based on the Stonington uh, zoning parking uh, requirements um, for, for this site. Um, so. We also think this will be very appealing as a hotel stay because of it's, it's aptly situated between downtown Mystic and the train station. Um, we feel that some people may uh, be coming in on the train and, and maybe not even will have vehicles. Uh, everything will be walkable uh, if they come in and taking uh, the mass transit from the, um, from the train and then being able to uh, walk most places or patronize a, you know, a, a taxi or, or an Uber service, something like that. <clears throat> um, as I mentioned, the building has been elevated for flood resiliency, um, but also doubles as allowing for cars to go underneath and uh, to uh, to park uh, underneath the underneath the building. Um, the uh, the water uh, use and sanitary impact. Uh, the site already has water service and um, sanitary service. Uh, one of the comments that was from the um, the Water Pollution Control Authority is that we can't increase any of the uh, sewer to the um, to the Mystic <clears throat> sewer facility uh, until the moratorium has been lifted and the sewer facility is upgraded. Uh, we don't anticipate uh, that this the construction will be complete prior to that. So we'd be happy to condition this approval that um, we, we we wouldn't be able to tie in until a time is such that the the moratorium has been lifted. 
um, but would like to get possibly construction started prior to that, uh, similar to some other developments that are in town that are under the same uh, restriction. Um, we, th we believe that this is uh, going to be a, an innocuous uh, traffic generator, given it's only four hotel rooms uh, compared to uh, what was the, the, the gas service station that it was before. Um, I think it's pretty obvious that uh, gas gas stations are going to see a lot more traffic in and out. Uh, the traffic in and out was in a much less safe condition, given the, the open curb cuts uh, off of Broadway that kind of let people just go in and out, um, in, you know, in and out over over two separate curb cuts. Um, we're, we're restricting and uh, and navigating that these uh, enforcing the the traffic to to take certain patterns now, which we feel will be a lot a lot safer. Um, I think that covers a majority of my presentation. Um, I would like to uh, hand it over to uh, any Mr. questions from the commission at this time. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, this is Ben Philbrick for the record. Um, is there a sidewalk on the Washington Street? There is not. There's not one proposed now, but that was a comment um, from the from the planning department. And, and what is your reaction to that, you and your client? My client uh, would prefer not to have to put the sidewalk in, but if it's something that this uh, board is adamant about, we would entertain it. Okay, thank you. Way for the record. Um, so just to follow up on that, how about the sidewalk on Broadway? Is that going to be kept? Yep, the, the sidewalk on Broadway will be re will remain uh, the same. And uh, if it needs any Im improvement from where we're, we're, we're introducing the curb cuts, we're going to, you know, we'll cut out the portions of that sidewalk and replace them with new concrete. Okay. And then how many cars are you anticipating are going to be parked beneath the building? Only two. Two cars. Correct. And then the other spaces are the the four that I see um, more towards where the firehouse is. So we have um, three on the westerly side of the property. Um, there are six on the southerly portion of the property. There's two in front of the building on the in front of between Broadway and the building. And then we actually have two more. You can see it, a number four here. The four refer to these two spots and these two spots here. Um, there was a comment from the town planner about these two spots not technically meeting the parking requirement. So even if we were to reduce them by those two spaces, we still meet our parking requirements. Could you use your pointer and just once again show where the parking is? Thank you. Yep. So there's three. Uh, if you're if you're following me here, there's three spaces along the westerly property line. Mm -hmm. There's six spaces along the southerly property line. There are two spaces in front of the building on the Broadway Avenue side. There are two spaces under the building. You can see the ADA space here. I'm sorry for that annoying yellow box that pops up. Um, there's another space underneath the building. So that's the two, the ADA with the regular space. And then we do have two more here that we did count under our application, but we would be willing to remove these if, if need be. Or at least not count them towards our parking count. Thank you. I, I have one question, Mr. Chairman, well, actually two regarding height. Could, could you remind us of the height of the finished floor, the first floor above base flood elevation? Um, yes, just give me a moment on that. I believe I have it on the plan, but it just might not be on this. Excuse me a minute. And then the overall height of the structure to its highest point. Um, Mark Camo is, is on the, the, uh, the call. I'm going to see if he minds, uh, addressing that because he's got those readily available. I think on his plans, Mark, do you mind chiming in? 39.5 feet total height from the grade. And what's the finished floor mark? Uh, I got to have a foot of freeboard and then, then your finished floor. So I believe we're 
uh, base flood elevation 12, and I believe we're at elevation 14 for our floor. Right. I think I think we might be even a little bit above that. I'll, I'll double check unless you have your unless you have your uh, on your uh, your architectural plans. But let me just um, yeah, that's that's on your elevation. Okay, and those those will be coming up next in in Mark's presentation. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, sir. Joe. We'll go on to the uh, architect or the landscape architect. Um, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I have one question for Sergio. Yeah. Sergio, Chuck Sheehan, uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, to Sergio. Uh, is everything designed, uh, is everything flood proofed and designed for the hydrostatic effects of flooding, all of the site improvements? Um. Yes, I believe so. There's really not um, anything on this site that Neil really needs any uh, specific flood proofing. Um, there's there's pavement uh, as far as the the, the parking uh, lot goes. Um, the elevator uh, as everything with the building will be flood proofed. Um, the elevator is required to go up to the first floor, the first uh, elevated floor. Uh, when it, at, at rest, so it's not within the floodplain. Um, if there was a catastrophic event, um, the drainage basins are essentially subject to flooding. And if they are, they, you know, when flooding recedes, it, they'll they'll be fine. There are some guidance on um, building sewers and um, and water lines, and we will make sure that. Uh, Hey, we also meet those flood codes, um, the, the the flood recommendations to make sure those are um, the the construction details for those are uh, both uh, and consistent with um, I believe this is Aquarian Water Company. They they'll probably have specific regulations for this area as well as the Water Pollution Control Authority. Make sure we meet all those requirements. Other than that, I don't think there's too much other things that um, are are really that need to be. "Quote unquote flood resistant on the on the site level. This is this in a wave action zone at all? It is not. Uh, that that would be a that would there would have to be a uh, there's a line known as the, the limwa limited uh, moderate wave action, and I don't believe that we are anywhere near that. We're in a, a an a, a e zone, um, so it's I don't believe there's any wave action in this area. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sergio. No other questions, Mr. Chairman. We're waiting for the architect or the landscape architect. I believe we're going to go to uh, Mark Camo next. Uh, Mark, are you ready to present? Yep. Do you need to stop sharing or do I just share? I can stop for you and then I think you can pick it up. I'll stop sharing now. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. I have several things to bring up. Um, uh, so, for, first of all, um, there's been obviously in social media an awful lot of hubbub around uh, many parts of the aspects of the design. Uh, one being scale, one being the design. Um, in terms of scale, if you were to um, go stand at the site, and look at the existing service station and and look at the distance from from the street sidewalk to the music building in the back where uh where the music store is um it's it's very small so this building is really uh hardly any bigger than a typical stonington house um it's just that you know i'm a trained uh manual drafter and these damn computer uh images make things look uh, bigger than they are um, so I'll, I'll address that as well as the aesthetics of the structures as we move along. Uh, so on, on, uh, if you can see my cursor on the left here, um, it's the grade level plan. We have, um, a concrete pier here and, and, you know, and this is part of the, uh, the, the, the complexities of, 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 you know, building within the FEMA zones. Um, we want to elevate the structure and be sustainable and look forward in 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 these zones and at the same time we have to fit architecture into it so we've got these large piers that support the building and they're here and here and here and here um but that that doesn't do it uh you've got to solve for racking and for shear 
So the elevator shaft has um, concrete masonry walls around it, as does the stairwell uh, that goes up, as does the um, the linen storage area. So those are made of concrete and they, they give the building resistance against any racking. Um, so it, it's, it's otherwise uh, stilted like that. And then in the, the floor plan, it, it's again, it's, it's, it's super small and super simple. Um, from the west side of the property, you come up into a lobby on the main level at elevation 14, um, out of the elevator or up the stairs, and there's a virtual kiosk, so there's no staff. It's just a virtual kiosk, the way that a lot of these smaller boutique hotels run. And you check in and you come down a corridor into either this room, this room, or this room. Um, this room uh, at the end on the east side has, um, has an extended living room. Um, expandable into another bed uh, that um, that takes out this this part of the building here. And if you go to the second floor of the building, shift this over, it's the same as the first floor. Um, so you would come up the elevator or the stairs and come down a corridor and you would service either into this room or this room. And this is where the, the house attendance uh, apartment would be down at the end here. Um, up on the roof, the what um, what I think the the Stonington side of Mystic doesn't really have uh, so much of yet is um, is advantage of the rooftop decks that we have, like Sift uh, is doing, and other properties. And so you would come up out of the elevator or the stair shaft, and you would come through a door out of that that enclosed um, circulation staff uh, shaft and into a, a, an, an open um, third level roof it's it's wide open it rained on you um there is just a small pool and a small um a spa and some tables to sit out and and lounge chairs and off to this end as you as i'll show you in the renderings there's a pergola covered um rooftop deck and a pergola covered um fitness area over here that would be seasonal um, I did maintain the walls in this U shape around this fitness area, um, only from an architectural and aesthetic point of view, um, to to let the facade continue up and through. So that that's what the the third floor is basically wide open, except for the circulation that that that, that gets you up here. Um, I would point out that I I met uh, previously with um, with staff at the at the fire marshal's office at BF Hoxy. And we've gone over the plan for egress and, and other uh, attributes and and things worked out pretty pretty well on that. Um, so this is the uh, the east facade of the structure as seen from Broadway or seen from the Henny Penny that's on the corner, uh, as as you know. And so you can see underneath you've got the um, the concrete pier, which would be a finished rubbed concrete, darkened kind of a little bit of a charcoal concrete. Um, the car is parked underneath it. This um, this is one of those diaphragm walls that I mentioned that's made of concrete that's that's enclosing a linens room. And then the upper part of the building is is made of you know very typical elements that we see around town. I mean, uh, engaged uh, treated pilasters in a Doric uh, method, um, much like the Bravo building. Um, white clapboard siding with black frame windows. And, and on this part of the building that rises up here, we simply have a wide plank um, plowed groove shiplap siding, which you'll see in all the pediments of all the buildings in Stonington Borough. It's a very old 200 year old detail. Um, in the top where, where it's pretty much wide open, we, we, we have sort of a, a pergola uh, up at the top that covers an area for um, the very few guests that are here because it's very small to bring a laptop up and sit out with a view um, you know, possibly out to the cove. Uh, and I, I have uh, also want to share, this is a storyboard I put together to better understand. I, I think, again, these computer generated drawings don't always do it justice. So to put in your head what's in my head, um, I would offer this up where the pergola, as I envision it up on this third floor, would be very open and elevated like this, but very much wide open, nice handled pilasters and, and very typical pergola detailing. The, the rail system, the guardrail system on the balconies, they're not very big balconies, um, but it's a black wire mesh system. 
Um, it showed up in the renderings. The computer renderings is white because it, it, the black takes over the way that it does in this CAD drawing. Um, but in reality, black on fencing always fades away and you hardly ever see it. So it's a preferred color. Um, so it would be it would be this um, it would be this here. The the concrete on the lower level. Um, this is that this is actually a flood resistant home in the ninth ward of Louisiana. And and they're struggling with the same things we are within the flood zones. And, and they're using concrete and diaphragm parts of the structure to resist the um, any potential floods. So so just the lower level would have this more darkened uh, concrete, kind of like the lower level of Bravo as you see it now. The black framed window expanses, um, I sort of mocked was after the modern farmhouse. Um, this is the little Jacobson structure in Connecticut. Um, modern farmhouse, black window frames. And this is an enlargement of the of the paneled shiplap siding. It's just a plain side with a plowed groove about three sixteenths by three sixteenths. Um, so I put this storyboard together to to show that the building is actually going to come across much much softer than the CAD drawings um, I think have 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 articulated it to be. Also, want to point out in the regulations um, a couple of things. Uh, this is a page from the Architectural Design Review Board regulations, and I would, would in, in full disclosure, um, I was the primary author on these regulations with, um, uh, with Bill Haas and Jason Vincent. And we have a, um, you know, we talked about um, uh, fragmented neighborhoods at the time that we put this together or lots that were vacant, new construction, buildings that were raised in new construction. And we talk about the context of of a neighborhood and this context. And, and by the way, I live about a 90 second walk from this site. Um, it's a very disjointed architectural hodgepodge, if you will, from the Acme Wire building to Henny Penny uh, to the beautiful building that was torn down on the Hendel property, the Gambrell structure that, that used to formerly be there. Um, and then and then the very deco style um, M bar next door. And it says in this line here, um, even when there's no consistent architectural pattern, new designs can contribute to the district's architectural characteristics by complementing certain existing physical physical conditions. So, you know, through form and material usage and things like that, we we've tried to tie the building into the many many different things that are that are going on here. I, I would also point out that um, in, in 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 municipalities that have design review boards and historic review boards, the Department of Interior strongly encourages that that new construction not disnify and and simply you know put a false and pastiche um, historical aspect um, out there. So so to, you know to build a Greek revival here would really do nobody any good. Um, nor are we building a, a glass box at the same time. We've got a, a structure we feel is articulated with um, with you know forward looking materials that we that respond to to the elements that we have to respond to at the same time and um, and doing it well the, uh, i'm going to minimize this and i want to go to another file this uh, this this is a typical downtown mystic residence. Um, it's right around the corner from where I live. It, it's and it's very tall. It's almost forty feet tall. It's raised out of the ground um, about four feet. It, it's got uh, the first floor here, the second floor, and then a very usable attic. And in correlating and registering the height of this in a photograph with the height of our building and correlating the grade. Um, the top of our building is just a little bit bigger than that building. So just to give you a sense of scale that that even though we elevated and then we have this articulation coming up through here, it's it's really not much larger at all than 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 a lot of the, the old cow housing uh, that exists down here um, in, in in Mystic. Um, so I'll minimize that. And then I've got just a few um, 3D renderings that um, Again, they they these are hard things to put together because the computer is doing the talking and 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 not our minds as the designers. So 
This is kind of standing at the Henny Penny. M bar is over here. Behind these trees uh, would be the, the firehouse, of course. And um, and this is this is the structure, and this is very true to scale. You can see how it's not. It's it's real. It you know it's it's not as big as as it seems to be in the two D elevations. Um, so you're looking through to the back here underneath. And then this is the, one of the rooms with the front part of it, another room with the front part of it, and a very open pergola system that we have up on the third floor there. Uh, just, um, sliding to the left a little bit and exposing more of the firehouse in context to show what that looks like. And then this is standing at the firehouse for the most part. Yeah. Um, what you would see, of course, that's ghosted out in the background. And this is the, the you know, the, the the wall that we're using to screen the building of concrete block that's next to us over here um and you can see you know right through underneath the building and this is how the building articulates with the circulation to the third floor the pergolas on the roof um and again we're missing a lot of the line work and the pilasters and, and a lot of the the more traditional textual detailing that we would often see um the pergola on the roof coming across is dark that's a render feature in the software. Um, it, it likely would be white and not be so uh, contrasting. It, it's something that's up in the air at the same time we might want to you know, contrast it with the windows. Uh, not sure about that detail just yet. Um, and then this is just kind of fading back away toward the train station, looking at the building, uh, standing in the, in the southeast and looking toward the northwest uh, in terms of what that would uh, from that vantage point there. And if I look through my materials here, I think um, I think that's all I had. Are there any questions of Mark at this time? Uh, this is Ben. I have a whole list of questions, if okay. this is the right moment. Um, hi, right Mark. Ahead. Yeah, this is Ben Kilbrick. Um, do you need the third floor? Is mostly that for architectural reasons, or do you want that to bring the the clients up there for recreation? Yeah, I mean the, the it, it's it's an amenity that um, that I think you know would set this apart from really anything that we have in the area um, to be able to go up there and. And you know, sort of sit out, bring a laptop up, sit under the pergola, um, and and have a pot and, and and have the pool up there. You really don't see that uh, anywhere, uh, you know. Really, um, and, and what what do you envision the view is from that height? Uh, from that height, we would see over to the cove um, beyond Acme Wire and over toward um, Sea Swirl. Mm -hmm. Your your block looking southwest. Yes, yeah. Okay. And, and and that view, and even looking to the north, you know, toward downtown, you know, St. Patrick's Church stands out quite a bit, and you that that more postcard kind of mystic view. So so the views from that elevation are um, are, are pretty attractive. Um, do you envision having like any kind of wet bar or the hotel hat serving drinks or food up there? I'm just no, concerned it, it might turn into an entertainment center, if you know what I mean. Right, right. No, there, there would be, and by by regulation, there would not be, and and by our client's choice, there'd be no service of food or alcohol on the property. Oh, good. Okay, uh, on the property. Um, no but say that again. By the no, right. no alcohol on the property. Um, right, how many no, gallons are in that pool? That it's a very small pool. I I don't know right. how many gallons, but um, uh, I. I, if Five, I go back to the, 500, you know, I wouldn't even, <laughs> I wouldn't even know how to guess. Well, my, my right. concern is weight. My concern is weight, meaning I have a 250 gallon oil tank in my basement and it's not very big. So, but if it's 500 right. gallons at eight pounds a gallon, you have some weight on that roof. And, and it's not, um, it, it's not a deep pool. At all, it, it's it's not for laps or anything like that. It's really just for um, for for cooling off. So it's just two. This is the more significant feature. It's two feet deep. 
three feet deep? Uh, uh, no, it is more um, more like around four feet at its at its. So if you're standing there, the water would be be you know between your navel and your chest. I'm um, just a place to cool off and 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 have the spa there. And okay. and the way that the structure would have to be built due to its use group, um, we'd be using um, steel structure with uh, corrugated um, composite floors. So it, so the structure itself would be would be ample enough to be able to handle anything that we put up there. But you haven't run the numbers on the weight? No, no, not yet, no. not yet. And it'll be drained in the winter, we assume? Yes, yep. Okay. Um, would you be able to provide a nightscape drawing? Has, has you occurred to do that? We did not, no. Okay. I don't think we require it, but sometimes I know commissioners like to see a nightscape. Um, moving along, in the 3D modeling you have, it sure looks, maybe that's what you were talking about with your computer generated. It doesn't look like you're at eye level on the street. It almost looks like you're at least the ones in our staff report. It looks like you're almost at the 18 foot high level. You know what I mean? Right, right. There, the, the focal point, um, in the camera settings in Revit of the ones that you've got was a little bit off. And, and it made, for instance, it made MBAR, it made the buildings in the surround look very small compared to the building, which I think exaggerated its scale. Uh, this is more, th this would be more like the, the vantage point you'd see where you're, you're pretty much at eye level here. Yeah, these are the first time I've seen these, I believe, with the landscaping. Um, I'm curious, how come there's no west elevation provided to us? Uh, because your your back would be right up against the wall of the other building, and and you'd be looking at really just a modified version of this. Um, and it, it, you could never see the west elevation. Your 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 back would be against that concrete wall. Well, of, I, was um, walking, I was walking down Washington Street, heading east. Wouldn't I be able to see that west side? You would see, you would, you, you'd see the top part of the stairwell um, standing up, which would be if I go to my PDF here. Um, and that's the ship lap? Yes, yep. All the way up with no breakage? So that ship lap would, would wrap around the corner. Right, right. That ship lap is all the way up to here with a with a pronounced cornice around it. And there's no breaking up of the lines per floor of that shaft, elevator shaft on the west side? Um, the elevator shaft, uh, not as it stands now, but, but the way that I ran, um, what I did over here on the east side, I ran the wide plank ship lap from, um, from the first floor right up to here, and I ran this uh, this belt line through. That, those are very heavy. Um, uh, that that's a lot of molding there, and I, I would not be opposed to wrapping it around this way and down around the stairwell as well to sort of articulate the horizontal banding there. I think that would be. I just didn't didn't really articulate that side as much as I did these at this point. But we could certainly do that. And did you ever make a shadow plan? We did. We did. Um, Have we seen most that? of the shadow? Come, yeah, most of the shadow comes from the neighbor. Um, let me. Uh, well, I hadn't seen this. Okay. Yeah. So that if that's a um, it's kind of a morning shadow. Morning. So our, our neighbors casting, and the the neighbor's building's bigger. It's casting a shadow out this way, and we're casting a shadow that just comes down onto Washington Street here, almost to midday, and then end of the day, and right. and we didn't extend the shadow uh from from the other building just our site on like that and my last question is and maybe it's for keith is um you are within the setback 
on that west side, that west corner? It, and there's no way to be 15 feet away from the, you couldn't scooch the building over to the east a little? Let me uh, back. Oh, I don't have my site plan up. Um, scooching it to the east. Mark, um, Mark you, do you want me to pull up the site plan? Yeah, yeah. Oh. That would be towards Broadway from Mystic Lumber, Mystic Junction, whatever the name of that. Keith, can you hear, excuse me. Keith, can you hear Ben? Yes. Okay. Keith's having trouble hearing on his computer. That's why I'm just checking. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm doing all right tonight. I can hear. Okay. Um, I guess while I'm, while I'm talking here, um, the building meets the normal setback requirements. However, what we're talking about is that there's a section in the zoning regulations that specifically governs hotels. This is section 6.6.10.4. And it says that the rear and side yard requirements for multi-story hotels has to be increased 10 feet for every floor over two. Um, so because this is a multi-story hotel, it has these um, extra setback requirements. And this rule didn't apply when they were planning on building a restaurant with the same size and design building. But now that it's a hotel, this new setback requirement has kicked in. Um, the regulation is very simply stated. It just says for the number of floors over two. Um, you know, we don't count that ground level, that elevated ground level as a floor, it's not counted as gross floor area, which is how we usually measure this stuff. Um, it looks like the top roof level, at least the parts that are enclosed with the roof and walls would be considered a floor because it's considered gross floor area. And that's where the problem is with this. Um, so yeah, as, as Ben was saying, you know, you know, the options are to move the building over somewhat or to eliminate the things on the top floor that make it a floor. It, um, what, would, what would that mean? Taking away the structures, but leaving access to the roof? You know, it seems like it. It's a little bit of a gray area as far as what would make the top level not be a floor to this regulation. Um, it seems like the minimum thing would be to not have it be gross floor area, you know, not having roofed areas up there. Um, elevators and stairways are not considered gross floor area. So it's sort of the commission's call how much would have to be removed up there to satisfy that um, that regulation. I know there's going to be public comments that will speak to that also. Keith, we're considering the floor area under that open pergola. We're considering that a roof. That's, that's your interpretation? Um. Mine is that if it's an open pergola, that's not considered a roof. Okay. Um, but some of the areas like the uh, the little fitness area is a real roofed area. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not sure who this question, I have one more question if that's all right. Um, I think in the staff report, it asks where the managers, is the manager of the hotel going to be living there? on site that's correct and there aren't any cooking facilities no no refrigerator no little dormitory refrigerator or hot plate i mean i, I mean i mean i think the usual the usual hotel um you know refrigerator coffee stations and things like that yes so so there's but other than that there's no food service no bar service the kinds of things you would find in a hotel no <clears throat> okay um, and then i do have one more question about the ivy wall i mean that's directed towards the landscape architect but is that a structure and is it to withstand hurricane winds 
And is that in this? How does that work with the setback of Mystic Junction? Um, it's a live wall. It's a freestanding wall. We're going to be getting a. Um, we haven't worked out the the actual structural details. We have a structural engineer that's going to be that ensuring that it uh, it can withstand hurricane force winds. Um, and what was the last question in terms of the setback? Yeah. Yes. Uh, the setback is as shown. I I think we have it at five feet off the uh, property line currently. Is that for a typical fence that's six or eight feet tall? This thing's it, how tall is this fence? This is not a fence. It's a, it's okay. a more of a structural element. Okay. And it's, I'm not, excuse me, Ben. Uh, that the, it's a We have a five foot setback off the the westerly property line to the, to right. the structure, so that it's allowed within five feet or or at five feet. Even if we consider it a structure, it's still allowed. And how tall is it? I believe it's going to be 20, 25 feet, Elena. Can you confirm? Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Mark, Mark, this is uh, Fred Dykeman. Can we go back to a picture of the building? Um, doesn't matter east, west. I have a question. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, the, the thing that puzzles me about this is. Um, is that there seems to be no allowance for uh, a, a pool with a four foot depth between the uh, hotel rooms on what would be the second floor <laughs> of the hotel and the roof. So, so are we, uh, I'm not sure how, how that works out. Are we, are we missing something in our perspective here or? Yeah, let me um, find the elevation. So if we if we go back to this elevation, yeah, this is a standing seam, standing seam curved roof that that sort of guards in uh, around that that deck area, and so the the pool level beyond this, you, you know, not right on the edge here, but beyond that, uh, what the deck would be up at this level here. And then the pool would come down into this level, into this here. Oh, okay. So, so the the people using the that level would be standing at about what looks like the railing height. Um, only on the pool coping, yes. Yeah. And then around the pool, it's down on the deck level. Okay. Um. On that living wall, or whatever you call it, have you talked to the neighbor? You're blocking off all daylight from those windows. Um, there, there aren't any windows on that side, from oh, my the, recollection. On her property, there are. Yes, there are. On this side, there are property. two. Yeah, there are. The second um, floor of that building is all big bay windows. Um, we haven't had any discussion that I'm aware of with the neighbor. So you're just blocking all sunlight from the neighbor completely. Well, uh, it wouldn't be all sunlight because the the sunlight would be coming down from the south. Uh, what? You're, you're right on her line. You're five foot. You wouldn't get much. Right. Um, so I, we were we're within our zoning rights to to build up to five feet, and uh, that neighbor also has uh, a non-conforming structure that's within I think four feet of the property line. So un 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 unfortunately, I mean that that's we're within our rights to build something as close as five feet, um, and if it blocks a little bit of you know if it blocks the light to come in, um, we could discuss that with with that neighbor, but. Um, we're well within our rights to to build uh, up to five feet per the zoning code. So it's a structure, not not a not a fence. Not, is, is this going to be a live all winter? Yes, Sergio, can you put up the um, the image of uh, 
I think I think we have an elevation from the ADRB meeting. Or I can try to put that up. Yeah, I'll, I'll just give me one minute. I just got to move some stuff around on my desktop here and I'll pull that right up. Hold on one second. Oh, let me see if I can find it. Um, All right. Elena, which, which, which one are you looking for? All right, let me see if I can find it on my. Too many things on the desktop. Sorry about that. I can't. So which, which, which uh, exhibit were you looking for, Elena? Just... Uh, the elevations that we submitted for the ADRD meeting. Those yes, yeah, I, I my have elevations those. show me, the the landscape just me, items. Just give me one minute, and I can pull those up. This is uh, the, there this are those is, windows. Yeah, there, there's the windows. Um, it's a it's a concrete block facade, um, and you know our our building would be about even with with the Broadway Auto edge here, and we would see this um, you know right up against this this facade. And we we thought the green wall would just be it would it would go up to their coping here, and be stood off of their building around six or seven feet. So there would be a gap between the wall and their building. Wow. Yeah, they're gonna. Um, it, you know, there'll be a gap to get. You know, so, so light would still go 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 down through. I'm not even sure. They don't. They've lost this, all of you. They've lost. Uh, yeah, you. There is no view from those windows any longer. So drop, drop the, the, the facade then. Hold on. Just drop it below that window. No. Um. Yeah, we could we could easily drop the green wall below the window. Okay. Oh, I think you got it. Or, or if I may make a suggestion, you stagger it. You lower it a little bit around the window, then go back up higher, and then come back down again. So you break up the. But we can't. You have to let people have, have their view. Rather than just a straight shot right across, you could. Why it's an ugly building. I I would I would just want to throw in that um, that the green wall concept came up when our our client actually spoke with the owner of the building, who had told him that she was considering um a mural of some kind on the facade of the building and with with his investment and in what he was going to put into the property you know, we don't know if it's going to be a whale or whatever it's going to be uh but we were just a little fearful that whatever mural ends up on that um wall wouldn't really contribute overall to the streetscape of broadway so we just wanted to mask it that, that that's where the whole thing came from so there could be a mural there. <laughs> and given the, the you know the rest of the building, I'm not I don't know how confident I am of, of the murals artistic contributions. But that that was the root of it. We just wanted to put the, the green fence, you know, put a, a live green fence up um, that would be a, a really nice backdrop, almost like the, the hedges do over here. Well, this is Ben again. My, my concern again is the height. Um, so you're saying it would come up to that bottom of the white corners of the Mystic Junction building? That's 25 feet? No, this is yeah. the building. Uh, actually, I, I oh. measured from the grade to the top, and it's, I believe, 22 feet, 8 inches. We were going to go up to about here. Um, uh, you know, if, if, if the building was masked off, I guess seeing from the bottom of the windows up is a lot better than seeing from the ground up. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I understand, you, you know, as, as I suggested, you just drop it down for the width of the bays of the windows and you go back up again, far feet, and then you come back down for the other window. Yeah. 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 We, we would, we, I think we would stipulate to that, that that'd be, that'd be nice. Yeah. As these, um, as the live wall is done um, in sections, uh, you know, it's not one continuous um, 
it's the way a fence is put together. You have sections for the fence. Understood. Post. Okay. Uh, so we can look at uh, variation in terms of the construction, but it would, would have evergreen. It would be green all year long. Well, yeah, I think the greenness is nice. I, I don't get me wrong. It's I'm just trying to reduce the wallless of it, if you will. Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. If that's such a word, I don't know. <laughs> well, and I think I think too the owner didn't want to go with this line of giant arborvitaes, you know, to to do a privacy screen because then, as you know, giant arborvitae can get 20, 25, 30 feet tall over time. Um, so he was trying to avoid that. Yeah that kind of heavy look. So Keith, this is Lynn. Um, we've used the term wall, we've used the term fence in describing this aspect. What is it considered in, in terms of zoning? And uh, what would be some of the parameters that need to be um, adhered to. Until now, I've thought of this as a fence. And as a fence, it doesn't need to meet building setbacks. And our regulations don't have a height limit for a fence. Um, although if a fence is over six or seven feet tall, you just need a building permit for it. Um, if it is considered a structure, like Mr. Serenzia said, um, it would have to meet building setbacks and as long as this meets the building setback, there'd be no real zoning uh, uh, rule against it. You know, our definition of what structure is exempts fences. Um, and you know, there's no further description about uh, about what this is. You know, whether this is a fence or a structure. Okay, Keith, if I if I I'm sorry to interrupt, but I I did speak with my client and he's he's very uh, hesitant to capitulate to lowering this this landscape wall fence whatever we're calling it because he is concerned that his neighbor you know is going to quote unquote graffiti the wall uh, which he's he's been told that she might she might do from uh, the hygienic uh, New London artists so uh, I don't know if there's anything that precludes. Uh, someone from doing that, but he's trying to protect his interest, uh, given that this building could turn into graffiti art. Um, and it, he really does not, and he th thinks that in a, a, a green wall such as this, he thought he was doing uh, something that would be attractive, that would be from the street, um, that would be, um, you know, covered with green and, and be a, you know, something that's sustainable and, and green and doing something that's benefit the environment as opposed to just putting up uh, something like a wall uh, or a fence or, you know, large arborvitae as uh, as Elena uh, alluded to. So um, we're, we really would like to keep keep it at the height uh, because we're he's fearful of what what that wall could could become. Uh, this is Ben again. I would just strongly urge if there's a way to lower it for the windows and they wouldn't be able to do any graffiti over the windows, you wouldn't think, just to break up that top line. And I would think placate the uh, neighbor next door with the natural light of their windows. Um, what we might be able to look into is given the 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 structure of the um, the live wall, if we possibly left you know, rather than as your suggestion was to start high and then do a cutout around the windows, if we rather than add in the the solid trays with the green plants in them, where those windows are, maybe there's an option to just leave the open framework uh, of that that wall in those areas, so you get filtered light going through. <laughs> That sounds like a reasonable solution. As, as much as we want to uh, try to accommodate, my, my client is really adamant that this wall stays uh, at or above that window um, because it's a structure that we're allowed to build uh, to the setback. Um, so I don't know if 
that's going to be uh, something that he will um, he will capitulate to. Well, this has been again. Would there be a possibility of seeing the drop get back at elevation? Give us a visual, please, on a screen so we can look at that one more time and how high it actually is being proposed. Yeah, let let me see if I can. I guess Sergio wasn't able to pull it up, and I don't know why when I go into my share screen, I'm not getting. Let's see. Station hotel. Um, where are you? Oh, you did find it. All right, great. Thank you. Um, so you can see it. It doesn't show it as a green screen. Is everybody able to hear me? But it no. does show. It does show the height of that. Uh, that screen, the lot where will, will be green in relationship to the building, uh, the the hotel building. And this is back in, and it goes all the way to Washington Street. Uh, just about to the end of the um, the hotel. Not all, yeah, not quite all the way to Washington Street. It, Thank you. it starts at one corner of the adjacent building and goes to the other corner of the adjacent. And 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 where would the roof line of the uh, building behind it show up here? It's not showing up here because it's I, right. I know, uh, I know it's not, but where where would it? How much it, it, higher? It would, be, it would be right at the top of of where that screen is. It, right there. Okay. Yes. So, um, this is Lynn. Just to Fred's point, do you have a rendering from the opposite direction? So you're walking down Washington towards the proposed hotel and you're seeing the wall. Um, no, that maybe Mark does. Um, this is the north elevation. So this is the elevation from, uh, Washington Street, you can see to the left is Broadway Avenue and and there's uh, the two trees. There are the um, infiltration basin area and then to the right, you can just see that green sliver and, and that's the height of that that green screen wall. So the wall doesn't go all the way to um, where a for example, a sidewalk would go, it stops at the edge of the building, correct? Correct, correct, that's correct, yes. Thank you. So, so from Washington, you really wouldn't see the wall because as you walk east on Washington, the building itself would mask the wall. Yeah, right, got it, got it. I, I wasn't, came out, you know, it would look like a, a green pillar or something of that nature. So, no. so, Mark, I have a couple questions um, beside the wall. Um, what would be the height of the building if you didn't have that third uh, floor with the pool and the exercise and the deck? So you would take off the 39 feet, um, ab about nine feet. So from the grade, it would be about 30 feet. 30 feet. And then can you put up your um, picture of of the house uh, where you were where you trying to make kind of a height size comparison? Yep. Me. There. Okay, so I always I always find these kind of comparisons very interesting in that, you know, you've you've put brought forward this sample of of a home in Mystic, and the building to the the 
this building looks like a block compared to the, what we have here um, that you've brought forward and the height, you can see that it's just a very narrow peak compared to the overall structure of the building. And that's not what you're proposing in your, in your um, building at all. Your building maxes out the height across the entire width and uh, of the of the building and the depth of the building, whereas this maxes out the height. It looks, you know, I mean, I think it's an attic space that doesn't even cover, you know, a, a quarter of the footprint, probably less of the building. So I just I just want to point that out that. You know, I, I when we make these kind of comparisons, it's it's really not an accurate comparison at all. Um, sure, if you go peak to peak, but the the difference in the design and the amount of um, the ratio of the building that's going to be at that height is is very different. I'd also right. like to ask you to put up your. Um, the, the kind of list of things from an architectural perspective, the, the kind of the guidelines that that you had put up. And there's one there that says, could you make it just a little bit bigger? Thank you. Um, it, um, I, um, where, it, where it talks about um, can you move it down just a tiny bit? Uh, yeah, something about um, what, how it reflects the other buildings in the neighborhood. And I think in this instance, it's not talking about mystic, Stonington side of the river neighborhood, it would be talking about what you see on the, you know, that block of, um, you know, Broadway and in this instance down Washington. I and mean, I'm not quite sure how the proposed building follows this guideline when it, when, when you look at it from that perspective. Certainly, certainly from the, you know, perhaps you could find an example if you look all over Stonington, but not in in just, you know, the neighboring buildings. So do you want to talk about that a little bit? It, yeah, when when we when when we wrote the regulations and we considered context, um, even though the you know the buildings in downtown Mystic. But its context is more or less described by by the the corner that it's on on Broadway, um, and we think of it as going um, around three or four buildings in any direction. So, if we went north, we would encounter M Bar, which um, is is quite deco and has large expanses of glass. We would then encounter Apple Rehab, uh, which has flat roofs and is very low profile. Um, CVS. Uh, and then there's a there's a period uh, structure. I forget what's in it now. It's changed hands a gazillion times. Um, and then we'd have the Henny Penny. Uh, we'd have the the beautiful little train station. Um, and uh, you know, arguably, do you go across the tracks or not to Acme Wire? Probably not. And then the train station. Um, so it 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 has a little bit of everything that you can draw from from Art Deco, you know, to shingle style of what used to be there. Um, so. So in in articulating the building, you know, first the the, the main level it, it is up out of the floodplain. There's really not much we could do with that. Um, but then, but then the 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 facade, um, we, you know, we're using a paneled engaged pilaster with with a Doric coping on the top of it, um, wide wide trim band uh, belt lines, um, you know, double hung windows, very typical of the area. And sort of a sweeping metal roof with some curve to it, um, and and I I think that when you look at 
when you look at this and you mention um, how boxy this is compared to this, I, it, it's funny because in trying to get a for Max Height and Stonington one time, I made the very argument that you just said that a gable peak is a diminishing mass. And therefore, if we're just a foot over the max height, it's the it's the it's the less part of the mass of the structure that is. And and what was thrown back at me is it doesn't matter. Height is height. Um, but when you look at the when you look at the facade of this building, though, then you got to remember that this is a pergola and it's very interstitial. And it's not really a it's not a hard roof structure that's coming across. It's um, it, it's it's much more you know penetrable in terms of where your where your vision goes and your view especially in the center part where there really is nothing so this is all open air up above this so even though it looks like on the elevation it's a hard straight line there's a lot of light coming through here at the same time yeah, i i i see what you're saying but when you're looking at from broadway so the entrance area um that's not really what you see is it from you're looking from, at it from the washington perspective but you're not from from broadway um you know looking at the building face on that's not what you're going to be seeing just on the corner uh on the corner here you would see these stories of, right. of right. facade yeah right okay thank you Hey, hey, Mark. Yep. The the uh, the American Prize building isn't it similar to, to this, or or at least it it doesn't. Uh, you you could you almost draw a comparison between between it uh, and that was a, that, the approval on that one. Yeah, that, you know, ironically, um, not not that I was ever looking at it because it's come along so so well. Um, uh, the American Prize building this shares a lot in terms of its articulation. Not its mass, though. This building almost would completely fit inside the Ameriprise building. A, a little bit of the third floor feature outside of their elevator shaft would, of course, stick up. Uh, but for the most part, this would fit inside that building that's going up down there and not even be as wide. And, you know, they've got those large brackets on the roof coping of their building. They 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 did a lot of neat things. You know, if if you were looking for a comparison of how soft this building would really look compared to the computer generated images, the Ameriprise building is a good example of how, as it was being framed, um, the, you know, the word around town was what the hell is that thing? But, but now that it's becoming articulated, it's, it's looking very, very good. And it's really breaks up the facade. There's a lot of ordering elements that they've used and, and um, I, give, um, I, I, I give them kudos to what they did. It's coming out nice. We have a lot of the same detailing. I've heard nothing but complaints about that building. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, nothing but complaints. So <laughs> probably wasn't the best example to bring up. Do we, have also, any, do we have any more questions of the landscape architect? Uh, well, this is Ben. Were we going to get a walkthrough of the uh, the whole site at some point with the landscape architect? Yes, I'm uh, waiting for it. Yes, yeah. Sergio, do you want me to start that now? Please. It, if it pleases the chair and the board, uh, then the commission, excuse me. Yes, please, please go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Um, hopefully, I can. Pull that up. Uh, screen one to come up. Um, station hotel, where are you? Um, well, I'm looking for the the plan that uh, we presented to the PZC. That's the one that we have to use, correct? 
Uh, Elena, I, I can pull it up for you. Hold on one second. Can you pull it up because that's yep, the one absolutely. that we need to use, and I'm and I'm finding the one that's. Uh, yep. I'm not finding give, that one. Give me yep. one. Give me one minute here. Um, do you want the the site plan? The site plan, yeah. The, I think there's a color rendered site plan which might be best for everyone. I have the black and white. I'm gonna have to pull it up. Uh, All right. Up that's fine. Um. So if you can, um, and can everybody see my um, my um, mouse or not? Oh. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Can we zoom it in a little more? Sure. Hold on one second. Yeah. Is that is that better? Yeah, that's better. So so essentially, you can see the on the west side of the building. Uh, you can see the the green wall, which is we've actually moved it in. Um, that shows it right on the property line, and it's not going there. It, it's been been moved in five feet. Um, you have an infiltration basin at the corner of Washington Street and uh, Broadway Avenue, uh, which has a mix of um, shrubs along the border. Uh, a couple of trees uh, that are kind of defining the streetscape. And um, inside the infiltration basin, there is a mix of different herbaceous plants. The, actually, the elevations show you much better. Uh, there's a mix of, of different herbaceous plants that uh, will grow well in conditions that are tending towards being wet. And those herbaceous plants, that that herbaceous plant seed mix is being used in the infiltration basin in the southwest corner as well. Um, you have an evergreen, a, a relatively low evergreen hedge over the south boundary between the parking areas and the fire station property. Um, we've uh, consulted uh, with the town's list of acceptable street trees. And those are the trees that we are using um, within the property. And um, I think that that's pretty much it. It's it's not a very large site with respect to landscaping. We don't have quite a lot of room to, to put much of anything other than around the two infiltration basins and then that small uh, planting area to the um, east side of the back parking bays um along broadway avenue um if you want to see specifics of what we're putting in sergio if you can pull up the materials palette for a uh, board that yeah that's that's going to give them a good idea as to to what's being planted on the site so um there are white spire gray birch trees that will do well around the infiltration basins they like getting their feet wet we have a couple of columnar hornbeam trees that are going on the west, back west property area. Um, Skyline honey locusts, which are an approved street tree in uh, Stonington. Um, the shrub plantings around the infiltration basin and along this bordering the sidewalks um, are things that are um, either native or they do well in urban streetscape areas. Um, some of the evergreen boxwoods, um, um, sweet spire, which has nice flowers in spring, red fall color, um, and then we're also using dwarf fountain grass. And the plants, the shrubs that are selected and the trees that are selected are also things that will do well um, in salt spray, coastal areas. I've used them in coastal areas. I've had good luck with them. Uh, they also do well uh, in, with road salt spray. Um, they're not as, as uh, not heavily affected by it. And then if you can see to the right side of that um, plant material palette screen, there's sky pencil inkberry, which is what's going along the back property line, the south property line. And then there's some images of the, um, the live green wall. Those show images of the structure of the wall being put on a building. Uh, it's the same type of structure, but heavier uh, when it's freestanding. They, um, it 
it's a complete kit that gets sent to the client. Uh, it comes with the structural elements, with the irrigation hoses, and the entire irrigation setup. Um, the trays that hold the soil in the plants also come from this company. The company's in Michigan, but they do work with um, Pride's Corner Farm in Colchester. Um, I've worked with the representative in, at Pride's Corner, Ben Lucas, on a couple of uh, green roofs. And it's the same company, Live Green, that provides the live walls, also provides live roof products. Um, so they're, they're quality products. Um, and the plant material itself would be, and the soil would be prepared and assembled by the people at Pride's Corner Farm. So the benefit of that being you've got local soil, local material, and you've also got a local representative nearby if there are issues that arise. Um, and if there are additional questions, feel free to ask. Well, hi, this is Ben again. What type of, uh, is it an ivy that will be on the? It would be wall? an ivy. We, we'd be using an ivy, probably an English ivy, Baltica English ivy, because that will stay evergreen throughout the year. Thank you. There's also a little corner piece uh, at the north um, west corner of the hotel where the sign says station. And as you see here, that that will also have the, the live green around that that uh, sign. Thank you very much. Any questions? Um, anyone else have any questions of the board at this time? Anyone else like to speak in favor of this application? Uh, uh, David, it's Lynn. Sorry, I, I couldn't get myself off mute. Um, could you talk about any outdoor lighting or signage other than the the black lettering that says station in? Is there is there anything being proposed or considered? My understanding is that whatever lighting will be there will be on the building. So I turn that over to Mark um, to address. Um, and, and signage on the site, I think there'll only be probably handicap signage, correct, Sergio? So the signage will consist of uh, just wayfinding signs, uh, do not entry, entry, stop signs. Um, those are those are typical, uh, you know, wayfinding and traffic signs that that aren't subject to um, the, the the signage regulations i don't believe um i think the signs that lynn is um referring to would be the signage for instance that's on the building so uh just we're very um uh, just very tastefully putting station one down the side of the the building uh near the on the on the corner as i as i have in my screen right now um there's no other signage uh that is proposed right now for the property as far as uh, like ground ground mounted signage, um, but we would go back to the zoning. I believe uh, Keith can clarify that if, uh, if I'm if I'm incorrect, but we can go back to the zoning official to get that uh, permitted as of right. Um, subsequent to uh, hopeful approval tonight for for this. Um, as far as the lighting goes, uh, Mark can articulate it a little bit further, but um, it will all be uh, dark sky compliant, uh, full cut off downward lighting. Uh, I believe we're proposing lighting in the parking areas because the site is so small, everything could be lit uh, basically from the, the building. And if if there were any lights, it would probably be bollard style. We wouldn't we wouldn't have anything very high as far as uh, as lights. I believe there was a lighting plan uh, the middle. And I'm getting a little bit of feedback. I don't know if someone else is it's almost like a vacuum. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, for the most part, I believe the lighting plan I just brought up. Uh, yeah, we're, I believe everything's going to be lit uh, from the building, um, which provides adequate lighting just for the property itself. And this is a photometric plan I brought up, if you all can see it. 
um, it identifies uh, where the lighting would be concentrated um, on the property. Obviously, the higher numbers are the foot candles. Uh, that's where the lights would be concentrated. And as you get towards the property line into our neighbor, they, they dissipate to almost nothing and, and zero in most areas. Would the uh, station one have a, side, a light on it? Um, I, I don't know. M most likely it would have some kind of uh, uh, down lighting uh, to, to, to light it up. Um, I, I, I don't have details for that right now. And, and lastly, that'd be a pain in the neck, but would the living wall have any lights on it? Um, I, I don't believe so. <laughs> no, there, there, wouldn't, there wouldn't be any need to have any lights on it, and it Just certainly change. wouldn't. Yeah, it wouldn't it certainly wouldn't be beneficial to the plants. No. Okay, thank you. So, um, Sergio, thanks. This is Lynn again. So, um, the the lighting on the third floor where the pool and the pergolo is so that I assume would be opened at night. So, would that always be on like you know how you have pool lighting and then it as has been um, talked about previously, the pergolo is kind of open. So I'm assuming there would be some kind of light lighting from there. What what is the what are the details around that? Um Mark, Mark may be better to uh, to address that, but uh, in my opinion, uh, we wouldn't need lighting up there unless it was being used and uh, um, I, I don't think most most pool areas aren't open 24 hours a day. They have access to their, you know, their um, uh, the, the the folks that are, are are staying there typically have key card access. This would not be open to the public. Um, I would think that we could probably put some motion sensing sensor lighting up there. And um, if, if there was a restriction uh, for the lights or make sure that they they all focus inward and not outward. To the, towards the, the public and the community, we'd be amenable to that. Uh, I have a question for Mark. Yep. Uh, because of Keith's new regulation, you came up on the, on the third floor. What would you envision without any structure up there? So, so as Keith mentioned, the the stairwell and the and the elevator are generally not counted as gross floor area. Um, so, so they they wouldn't count. And then, in terms of the rest of the structure, it would be we would build the east wall to simply continue the architecture up. But if you were standing, um, for instance, uh, at the pool, looking toward that east wall, there's no wall between you and it. it it's it's wide open. So it is it is actually all wide open up there on the on the rooftop deck. There was some recreation, I mean, a spa area or something, that area there on the east wall. Yeah. That we, would be, was enclosed. That would no longer be enclosed. That's right. We previously had that enclosed before that regulation uh, had come up, but we would, obviously, we can't enclose it now, so we would open no. that wide open to the roof. So that would all be open. That would be all open. It's an yep. open roof. No, yep. No, no top on it or anything. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else have any questions at this time? Yes. Now I'm now you've got me confused, uh, Mr. Chair and Mark. Can we go back to an elevation, please? Of what's pergolized, what's canopied, and what's open on that third floor? The pool area in the central building is wide open, I understand. At the yep. north end. The recreation room or fitness room is now wide open with no walls, no glass. That's that correct. Yep. So if you were, if you were uh, standing out here by the pool, looking yes. in here, um, there are awesome. there's there's no walls until just this part that sticks out by Broadway. We continue the wall up here and around to the corner here. Around to the east side. Because that's for structure, you said earlier, correct? That's correct. Yep. And it, so right up there. So but, that's part of the building. Uh, it is, but it's not It's not floor area. Okay. And would these little, your side walls would have to be there? Uh, these? Would you have, 
Yeah, uh, right where yeah. these two people are standing. Okay. Oh, and those aren't walls. So if you were, let's say oh, you scale, yeah, if you, that's a railing. If you scale okay. this side of the building and looked over this handrail, you're looking right over uh, toward the pool with nothing gotcha. in your way. Great. Thank you for clearing that up. No problem. Any, any other questions at this time? Uh, anyone else like to speak in favor of this application? So if anyone wants to speak on this, don't forget to unmute your microphone. Anyone opposed to this application? Is anyone opposed to this application? Any general comments on this application? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to speak under general comments. It's Ben sure. Tamsky. Go right ahead. Please identify yourself, Ben. Uh, it's Ben Tamsky. I'm speaking. Um, I'm reading uh, a letter from Paul and Claire Sarter of 12 Jackson Avenue, and then I will make my own comment. But I did promise to read their letter into the record. Um, Regarding this application, we ask of the PZ, PNZ not to grant the applicant any relief from the current zoning regulations required, requiring increased setbacks from the submitted plan. As Mr. Bryan states, the application meets these requirements with the exception of section 6.6.10.4, which requires additional side and rear yard setbacks when a hotel is over two floors in height. The plans do not meet this requirement due to the roofed over space, gross, air, gross, gross floor area, and the top level. We further ask that the commission use caution regarding the subsequent statement from Mr. Bryan's. The applicants may revise the plans to eliminate floor area at this level. This regulation does not preclude having roofed it. Frankly, neighborhood concern is that the applicant may choose to remove the roofed in area on the top floor, but then attempt to maintain the pergola or similar structure on their plan. We respectfully ask that you please make clear that such a structure still functions as a roofed area Use, use essentially in the same manner as any other structure would support walls and roof. We believe and do request that there should be no wall or roof structures of any kind allowed with a special use permit if the roof level is not to be considered a floor for zoning regulation purposes. We ask that you please require that the applicant adhere to the regulations as written with no special relief or exception. Allowing such relief would set a dangerous precedent in town and especially Specifically, our neighborhood regarding possible future similar applications in the LS5 zone, encroaching on surrounding adjacent residential neighborhoods and negatively impacting our quality of life. Thanks in regard to Paul and Claire Sarter, 12 Jackson Avenue, Mystic, Connecticut. Um, also, so those are their comments. My comments, um, yeah, I think that you've really got to look very carefully at, first of all, only the ZBA can uh, vary the Design regulations, as I'm sure you all know, most of you have been on the ZBA. Um, so I think you have to look very carefully at just what remains on that roof deck and what would be considered floor area, but also the intent of the regulation as it relates to mass when it's that close to a neighbor. Um, if you do away with the roof, but leave the walls, the mass is still there, and I think the intent of the regulation is to pull that mass away from the property line as it gets higher. Um, that's all I would have to say about that in agreement with starters. Uh, a couple other items, sidewalks, 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 sidewalks. Yes, Washington Street needs sidewalks. Um, it's been discussed from, at the police commission. It's been discussed amongst the um, Board of Selectmen, uh, we need sidewalks everywhere. You almost, almost got them at the uh, Ameri uh, Ameriprise or whatever the financial building is on Route 1 and then gave up at the last minute. Um, please require sidewalks. If they don't want to build them, they can, they can challenge it and let the judge decide whether you can require them or not. But the POCD 
asks for them, and I think you should require them on this project. Um, also, it's a very tight site. The parking is right up against the property lines, uh, particularly that living wall in the back. I see no no room for uh, stacking snow and snow removal situation. Uh, I don't know much about that, but I think that you guys should question that. And um, third and last, the rooftop definitely in your stipulations restrict rooftop lighting because I think that's going to be a problem. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Sorry, thank you, Ben. Anyone else in general comments? Colleen, you there? Keith, did you see Colleen? Um, I saw her name earlier. Now I don't see it. There is a general. There is someone who's just called call in user, so that could be okay, anyone. Right here. Hmm. Anyone else like to speak? Mr. Chairman, Ben Tamsky once more. Yeah. So there's just one one thing I'd like to add that I forgot. Um, you know, this this application was presented really as an incomplete application when you accepted it, which started the clock rolling. Um, I'm sure the applicant would like to get going on this, but I think there's a number of questions here that require some real consideration by the board. And I just would advise you not to be rushed into thinking that you need to finish up tonight or even close the public hearing tonight. If you need to get more information, more um, opinion from an attorney, town's attorney or whatever, um, keep the public hearing open for another 35 days. You can and you have 65 days to make a decision. So just, I hope you won't feel rushed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Keith, it's your turn. Sure. So um, as part of our review here, uh, we sent this to other departments and reviewing agencies. Um, the town engineer had um, some minor comments about details that can be addressed in the stipulation if you approve this. Um, Architectural Re Design Review Board um, reviewed this um, over the course of three meetings. Um, and you saw in uh, Mr. Camo's um, comparison of the house versus the building, that was the original design. Uh, you can see how it looks different now after the ADRB's review uh, with their comments. Um, and a lot of their comments focus on adding the landscaping to this also. Um, EDC recommended approval of the application. Um, we did not get comments from DEP on the CAM application. Um, state statutes require that we give them 35 days to do so. It's been a lot more than that. And because of COVID and the retirement of their, um, their analysts that used to review the plans, um, we don't expect anything uh, to be had from them. Um, as was stated a lot, I think that um, that setback issue is the main thing. For the commission here, you know, it's the main zoning issue. Um, the two pit, two spaces along Washington Street don't really conform to the regulations, but they are proposing to remove those. Um, sidewalks are an issue that's been mentioned along uh, along Washington. Um, and Washington is an area where the town is really looking to uh, looking to have sidewalks, especially further down towards the west. Um, it's an area where, where they're really lacking. Um, other comments our department had were things that could easily be met, like size of proposed trees at maturity. Um, the balconies and entrance canopies, um, those would have to meet the setbacks too. Um, those should be sown on the site plan. Um, this review doesn't include signage because we don't have the real information on the signage, how big it is. So that'll have to be submitted at a later date um, to our department for review. Um, the police commission, I should mention, also reviewed this. They had a lot of concerns about the restaurant proposal, but all their concerns were addressed with the hotel. Um, the decisions to make here 
are um, the waivers requested, um, the coastal area management application, and the special use permit application. Um, as far as any recommended stipulations, if you were to approve, approve this, uh, there were some recommended in the staff report. Um, and I like to read all these just so they're on the table and in case the applicant has uh, has an issue with them also. Uh, number one was that the final plan shall eliminate gross floor area and roofed over space on the roof level in order not to comply with section 6. Point, excuse me, in order to comply with section 6.6.10 .6 of the zoning regulations. Now, um, I should clarify that, like I said before, that hotel regulation just says you increase the setbacks for the floor over two. It doesn't literally say gross floor area. Um, in my view, that was sort of a clear way of doing it, but it's really up to the commission's interpretation as far as what should be removed up there to, uh, to meet that section. Um, number two, final plan shall eliminate the two parking spaces adjacent to Washington Street in favor of additional landscaping in order to comply with section 71018. Number three, final plans shall be reviewed to the satisfaction of the town engineer and Mystic Fire District. Number four, the applicant's design engineer of record shall provide inspection services and certi certify to the construction of all stormwater management systems to ensure compliance with design specifications. Certifications shall include, but not be limited to system bottom inspection, material specifications and testing, system installation prior to backfill and outlet structure construction. In addition to inspection services, as built conditions of the drainage system shall also be provided to the Department of Planning prior to issuance of the certificate of zoning compliance. Um, that was the most boring one. Uh, number five, the property owner is responsible for yearly required maintenance of stormwater infrastructure. As specified on the plans and maintenance checklist, the stormwater maintenance checklist shall be recorded along with the final plans. Number six is the typical language for an erosion and sedimentation control bond to protect against those sort of problems. Number seven is prior to the issuance of any zoning permits, final plans shall be signed by the commission and recorded. Number eight, construction is subject to the WPCA's moratorium on increasing flows to the Mystic plant. Number nine, and I think this might need some clarification from the applicants, um, is this approval may include a hotel liquor permit for hotel guests only. I had that in there because, assuming there might be mini bars or something like that, even at that level, it might need a liquor permit. Typically, liquor, liquor permits need another special use permit. So in order to prevent them having to go through that again, um, but we should just clarify with them that they're even going to need that. Uh, number 10, this approval does not include any signage, which shall be reviewed by staff. Um, as far as other ones based on the conversation tonight, uh, possibly a number 11, that the, la the landscaped wall shall be a minimum of five feet from the western property line, which was something said tonight. Um, and it's up to the commission. You know, if you were looking for other ones, like the sidewalk along Washington Street was another uh, was another possible one. Keith, could I just uh, say one thing? It, it, if it's if it's um, ag agreeable to the to the uh, to the commission, if we would we would uh, have a sidewalk along. We would include a uh, an an ADA adequate sidewalk um, along Washington Street. Obviously, within the um, the extents of our our property line. Great, um, Keith. One question for you: uh, When we have had hotels in, proposed in the flood zone, uh, in in the past, we've had uh, strong recommendations from I think DEP uh, that we that we not allow that because of the the risk of. Uh, of people getting injured by high water and that sort of thing. You, you haven't heard anything from them? We haven't heard any response from them. Um, in the past, we had, um, I know they had that comment, we were dealing with a, a zone change application in which the commission had to 
really think about whether to change a zone to accommodate that. Yeah. Um, in this case, a hotel is an allowed use in the LS5 zone with the flood hazard regulations. Something that um, we did, um, something we did um, require recently for a larger apartment building was a an evacuation plan for the guests, and maybe that's something uh, the commission would want to see here. Um, I I would like I would like to come for the seaport. I'm sorry, Fred. I didn't mean to speak over you. That's all right, Lynn. I'm used to it. <laughs> but I do believe the evacuation came up uh, with the seaport um, application for their boutique hotel. Yeah, and, yeah, and, it did come up with that. And it needn't be elaborate, but I think we ought to have a commitment from the. Uh, from the operator of, of this hotel that they will uh, make some provision to get their guests uh, to high ground if, for instance, the police department uh, suggests evacuation, that sort of thing. Well, put them yeah. on a train across the street. <laughs> um, do we want to continue this hearing for another and get everything together? I, I think I, I think we should, should, Mr. Chairman. I I have a couple other questions. And looking at the plans while um, Keith was going through the his list of stipulations, and I I would like the applicant to, to confirm this. The proposed pergolas on the roof. The the roof. The I'd love roof, to see a new a new plan of the roof. Right, I, I do, uh, because the pergolas in the plan, it looks like the roof is solid. It yeah. does not yeah. look like it's flatted at all. No. So I do want that stipulated or, or confirmed one way or the other. It looks like it is not, um, which to me is not a pergola. You know, we throw that term around very loosely. And I think we need um, to look at the definition of what that means. I also, Keith, would like a review of what lighting um, stipulations we have on, uh, you know, third floor open deck lighting type um, stipulations. Yeah. We need the lighting and the signage too and things. I think we mm -hmm. could. Uh... Or, or, and the nightscape? We can tweak things for next. Mr. Year. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, there's one other thing I think that should be looked at and resolved before the next meeting, and that is if there are going to be changes to the to the setback. This is a very compressed site. Any changes at all to the setback that shift the position, the footprint of the building, are going to move everything around. And and while it seems like the applicant's trying to you know develop an option to avoid that, if if it has to be, uh, if the building has to be shifted, it, it could shift the locations of everything. And it really should be redrawn before the next meeting so so that that we see the impacts of, of those movements as opposed to just saying that the building is gonna be repositioned. So so if if the setbacks do change to accommodate the third floor, uh, then, then those changes ought to be made as well. This is a very compressed site. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I would like to just the ability to speak on a few things before. Uh, I don't know when it's appropriate. I, I don't want to interrupt, but I do uh, request that I get the the ability to speak before you uh, decide to continue this matter. Uh, you can speak. Anyone else have any questions of Sergio? We can speak right now. Take your rebuttal right now. Uh, thank you. Um, so I, I wanted to address uh, a few things, uh, one of which, and, and I understand uh, the, the concern to continue this, but I, I would make the request that uh, if you can render an approval conditionally tonight that we do so, um, and I offer up the following. Um, with respect to the uh, the third floor or the, the rooftop, I'll call it, the rooftop surface and um the uh the the need for a potential increase in the setback um 
I think it's very clear in the uh, zoning regulations, and Keith can confirm this, that it doesn't reference gross floor area. Uh, it, the the need for a uh, increased setback has to do with any floor over two. And if you read the definition of floor in the regulations, I don't think you need the solicitor uh, or your, your attorney to, to, to uh, interpret this. It's very clear. Floor is defined as the top surface of an enclosed area in a building, including a basement, top of slab in a concrete slab construction, or top of wood flooring in a wood frame construction. If you consider the rooftop a floor, the only thing that we have to do to meet the regulation is make it not an enclosed area. To me, an enclosed area is something with a roof and, and all four sides or however many sides to enclose the structure. We are conditioning this, this approval to say that we will not enclose the structures on the third floor. Um, Mark has made it very clear in, in the, uh, the plans that he's presented, I think this evening, or at least in his testimony, that he has removed walls so that these are not considered a floor or which is defined as an enclosed area. So I, I would implore the, 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 the commission tonight to really take a, a look at this, and I don't believe it needs any interpretation. It does not reference gross floor area. It ref references floor, which is very well defined in your regulations. Um, and Keith can, can speak to that um, further if necessary. Um, with respect to uh, some of the approvals, um, we've been now to the EDC and, and we, we took into account some of their comments. Um, we got an endorsement from them. We've been to the Architectural Review Board three times for this project. Um, it, it, this was purposefully and very well thought out. Um, and I know you're seeing it for the first time, um, but I don't believe that there's anything incomplete about this application as Mr. Tansky uh, attested to. Um, we've, uh, as I mentioned, we've gone to Architecture Review Board. We've pulled back from the restaurant uh, use, which we originally anticipated going in as. And uh, we, we did have a, a meeting with the first select woman with the planning staff to make, to, to identify that we would be able to do a restaurant with off street parking. And when it came to light that the off street parking, there was a nuance in the regulations. My client very, uh, he, he pulled back and said, okay, let me do something that's going to be appropriate for this site and is approvable, uh, you know, through a special use permit. Uh, we feel that the hotel uh, use is appropriate. It's, it's in walking distance to downtown. It's in walking distance to the train station. Um, it's on the east side of Mystic, which is in need of some improvements, we feel. And my client is very um, excited to uh, do this project and others. Uh, he's, he's also working on 44 Williams, uh, and he, he, he's, uh, he's in, in anticipating doing more projects in the area. Um, and uh, I think we've done a, a decent job or a very good job of uh, doing it, putting together a building uh, Mark Camo's architectural drawings that, like I said, the Architectural Review Board reviewed three times and gave their endorsement. Um, we went to the police commission. Uh, we heard what they had to say when we were proposing the restaurant. Once again, we stepped back and said, this is too intense for the site. Let's take a step back and put something that's more appropriate for the site. So I, I, it's not like we just, you know, threw this application together and came in, in front of you. And I know you're seeing it for the first time, but this was very thoughtfully done, um, and we went to the police commission twice uh, to get their endorsement. Um, I also would like to, uh, you know, we, we had a meeting with the town engineer. Um, we've reviewed his comments, and to his satisfaction, um, he he was all set, and I believe we've conditioned it to the approval that, you know, we will make sure that uh, I think he had very few comments um, that we've, we've addressed and uh, is conditioned in the approval. Uh, we've met with the fire chief and uh, Mark Camo had a had a very productive conversation so that we were ready for any building uh, code issues and fire code issues. And we'd be happy to accommodate an, evacu an evacuation plan uh, for this for this hotel. It's only six rooms. Um, I don't think it's going to be an extensive plan. So and I'm sure Mark can speak to it that there will be emergency access lighting. Um, and we can put together an evacuation plan as need be that will meet all required emergency code requirements. 
Um, as thank you, Sergio. I hear you. Um, um, I, I just want to address. Um, let's see. I just want. Listen, to listen, listen. we're not we're not yeah. like the other commissions. Okay. We meet every, we meet every two weeks. Okay. Today's the fourth. The next meeting would be the seventeenth. That's less than two weeks away. Okay. So I think I think if we can get things done in two weeks, we're not going to hold you off months and months. And we Mr. Chairman, can I? I, I, I just want to get a couple other things on the record, Mark, before you go. Just, yeah. Hold on one sec. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I, I addressed uh, Mr. Tamsky's concerns. Uh, rooftop lighting. Uh, we'd be happy to. Abide, we will abide by all the necessary code requirements, but I think it's a safety issue to make sure that there's adequate lighting on a roof, uh, as well as you know ample um, uh, uh, railings and things to that of that nature. We don't want to be lighting up the night sky, but I, I think that ample lighting well, for we, safety, safety and security like to, is like required. To see this. Yep. I think we we just like to see this. It's just two weeks. It's not two months. It's not a month. It's just well, two weeks. Understood. I just wanted to make sure I got on the record addressing these concerns. So, uh, and as I mentioned, uh, the sidewalk, we, we'd be happy to, to accommodate. We put it all end. together next <laughs> meeting and in half an hour we can get it done. I mean, we're that close, I, I think. I just have one thing I'd like to add, if I could, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, that we're eight feet off the setback on the west side, and we're an arm stretch away from moving to the east, and then we can actually do an entire third floor. But we chose not to. Okay. Instead, we have a third floor roof situation that erodes the mass that we think is the best thing for a small boutique hotel and the best thing for Stonington. But we only have to move our stretched out arms and we can do an entire I, third I, floor. I, 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 we all hear you. I, I think okay, just, just we, want to make we, it clear that the third floor is a yeah, lesser factor than I think wanna, it needs to be. We want to work with you, but I'd like to have the total picture. Because there's so many little stipulations we have, we have to put in now. If we can get it all in writing, all done before the next meeting, just come and say, we're going to change this, this, and this. You know what we're asking for, and I think we can get it done in 10 minutes. I don't think we're going to hold you up much. We're not holding up any construction or anything at this time of year. Plus, you don't have the sewage. So, um, Mr. Mr. I would like to a motion to continue Mr. the hearing. Mr. Chair, may I have one more uh, request for the next hearing, however? I, I don't think we've ever approved a plan without all four elevations. I really would love to see the west elevation. Okay. Any other, any other questions? Do I hear a motion to continue the hearing? Make a motion to continue the hearing to the next meeting. Second. All those, any more, any discussion on it? Can I just ask a question? That meeting will be held on what date? 17th. The 17th? Yeah. Thank you. Tuesday, not Wednesday. Bob, um, just to clarify, yeah. oh, did you vote yet? One small. We are, what? We're going to have them taken the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, aye. aye. Yeah, just to clarify, with when it's a continued public hearing, new things can be submitted up to five days before the continued hearing. Okay. So that's the uh, time limit you have to submit the new stuff. I'm glad to hear about the sidewalks. That's that's a very good. Yeah. That's a plus. I do also just for clarity, Keith. When we when we uh, continue the public hearing, that does mean that the public can also speak. Oh yeah, is that oh, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah, so yeah that's, that's a good fun. that's a good point too. Sure right? All new, they can speak in all new stuff. But yes. Okay, I just I wanted to be sure everybody understood. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Anything else come for the board tonight? We're doing ladder point. No, oh, there's Latimer Point here. Anyone from Latimer Point? I guess not. Keith? No, uh, nothing. Nothing else with that. No. Do you have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Se second. 
Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, you, thank you, Sir Joe. All right. Bye. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you all.